I grew up on an independent little rock in the middle of the Irish Sea called the Isle of Man, where open was just our way of life and everyone knew everyone else's business, especially my parents, a plumber and a hairdresser, who taught me that whether you're fixing someone's hair or their toilet, working with the best tools and people can solve all of our problems. In high school, I was fascinated by science, but I found it cold and dispassionate. Its language intimidating. I sometimes still do, and yet I'm a neuroscientist. In my early 20s, I worked on Skid Row in LA and came face to face for the first time with homeless Vietnam vets and addicted moms about my own age and I absorbed the pain of mental illness staring right back at me. I decided right then that understanding how life changes our brains could help us understand each other better. Maybe help us tackle society's growing mental health cha challenges and make this world a kinder, healthier place to be. So I headed off to graduate school, got my brain scientist credentials, professored my way through a pretty exciting research career, and right at its peak, stepped off neuroscience's front line to commit myself to democratizing science. Why? Because science is not working the way that we need it to. Science is still painfully out of reach to most people, and scientific ignorance gets amplified daily throughout social media, manipulating and eroding public trust in science with every single misinformed tweet. Ignoring science cost us over a million lives this year. But I get how this happens. Science can inspire great hope, but it is elitist, and many of its fields, including neuroscience, are complex and siloed and riddled with failures to reproduce high-profile findings. Why should the public trust us when scientists are busy competing with each other or putting data that cost millions of public dollars to fund into inaccessible silos? The good news is that most scientists do want more open collaboration and culture change, but the ecosystem that can help make that happen, open science, is only just being built. I stepped off my career treadmill to help my community team up and share what we know, break open our protected silos and invite in experts from other fields to help us change the way that science gets done. Thankfully, I found out I was not alone and together we have grown the open science movement developing ways to look under the hood at each other's data and find ways to share our ideas, tools, and software. But if we are really going to change science and make it impactful, we have to reach down from our ivory towers and include those who will be the most impacted by it. You, and that is citizen science. Some of the most inspirational neuroscience insight I ever received hasn't come from people with MDs or PhDs, but from people in the real world, savvy, wise 80-year-old ladies in long-term care facilities, pregnant recovering drug addicts in women's prisons, and Baltimore daycare moms fighting the government for the vital food programs that could sustain their children's growing brains. Imagine how public trust in science could change if those citizens engage in the science that they care the most about and then maybe benefit from it. But can science really be advanced by people with no formal training in it? In 2015, I joined an Obama White House think tank, brainstorming upcoming challenges in their big data initiatives, including the Brain Initiative. I was invited back shortly after to present on how citizen engagement 
A true passion of our science geek of a former president could transform both science and experiential education. I came back with a plan and Zoran Popovich at the University of Washington Center for Game Science and I got busy building a global neuroscience lab online. There are eight billion people on this planet and we are as similar and yet different as the 80 billion neurons that sit inside each of our heads. In our game Mozak, you get to become part of a global village carefully tracing images of the brain's neurons, providing stunning reconstructions that neuroscientists can use. Thus far, thousands of people from 184 countries, including the Isle of Man, have participated in Mozak, carefully reconstructing the brain one neuron at a time, providing vital data that developers need to be able to take single cells and reconstruct them into a 3D brain map for understanding us. In Mozak, teen gamers and retirees work together on the same team. They feel inspired to learn and say that they feel empowered to be at the frontier of science doing things that really matter. It turns out there are many frontiers of scientific discovery that are now available to anyone with an internet. And Seattle is becoming a bit of a global hub for this. Fold It, a game out of David Baker's Institute for Protein Design at the University of Washington, has now been played by over half a million people worldwide, including my own daughter when she was in high school. Fold It gave us a challenge to figure out how proteins fold in different environments. Why is this important? Well, coproteins on the surface of fatal viruses are the keys that they use to lock in and attack our bodies. So far, folded gamers have solved coprotein structures for HIV, Ebola, and now COVID-19. Their strategies will help us to design new therapeutic locks that could save many of our lives in the next pandemic, or perhaps stop misfolded proteins from gradually destroying our brains in devastating diseases like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, or ALS. Across South Lake Union, Sage BioNetworks, one of the world's leading open science organizations, run Dream Challenges. These are competitions, some with monetary rewards that anybody can sign on to do to solve pattern finding missions in human disease data. So far, Sage's dream teams have identified unique early disease biomarkers that could help diagnosis and treatment of bone damage, cardiovascular disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and now, COVID-19. This might be a bit of a surprise, but getting some traditional scientists to accept that regular folk with no formal training could contribute to understanding their precious data has been a bit of a hard sell. But some of us knew that it was a risk worth taking and that it had to start from within. It is not that much fun being dismissed, belittled, or having your sanity questioned by some of your more traditional colleagues. But nevertheless, we persisted and have grown a global diverse discovery force of Uber drivers, retirees, teachers, comedians, lawyers, and yes, even hairdressers and plumbers who can hop on a screen anywhere in the world, help us take on big data and win. One of these is Carmen Mandel, an Argentinian amateur photographer who has used her artistic eye to produce vital data for NASA's GLOBE program. This is a program where NASA recruits people of all ages and types across the world to come in and work with their top scientists to develop new models to combat climate change. NASA also reached out this year to this planet's citizens 
to see if they could help them design a future when we might have to live on another one. They just completed a Lunar Lou challenge, publicly sourcing designs for how we might one day sustainably poop on the moon. I'm fairly sure that my dad, the highly competitive Air Force vet slash plumber who loved space and never had the chance to be an astronaut would have been all over this one. In the last five years, Open and Citizen Science worldwide have assembled an amazing team that has now converged to create a sweet spot where our new scientific democracy takes off. This is where I live. It is where experts and enthusiasts work together on open data. This year, we underwent a major teen growth spurt driving unprecedented global collaboration in scientific discovery when we were all challenged with a common enemy, COVID-19. 3D printer designs openly shared, rapidly produced masks, ventilator parts, facial shields in the parts of the world where they were most desperately needed. When international data become open, Viral DNA sequence hot off the pipeline in China and early health data out of South Korean hospitals can be modeled anywhere, producing new viral assays and tracing techniques and also warning signs for us to protect the virus's most vulnerable victims worldwide. Diversity is critical in this. I'm currently working with two people-powered projects on youth mental health and dementia, where different cultural perspectives will be essential because people with different backgrounds see patterns in different ways and can then make sense of them for their own community. Ambitious brain projects across the world are now filling our data banks with exabytes of data using technologies where we can now visualize thoughts and emotions racing through our human brain connectome, producing glorious colors as we learn, age, or become infected with a virus. Each color change is a signature of how life is influencing our brain, giving us our unique brain fingerprint. Each color change could also hold clues as to whether we might succumb to mental illness but we can't just pop these images in an algorithm and get it to spit out magical answers telling us how we're doing. For that, we need to know the questions to ask. We need your insight and tech at the table. Scientists just can't do this alone. AI holds incredible potential for changing our future but still cannot match the power of the incredible pattern spotting human mind. I don't need a computer program to tell me which of these I would rather eat than cuddle. Artificial intelligence needs human insight, ideas, and innovation to put that eye into AI. Seeing and understanding patterns in 4D is our superpower, something my hyper 13 year old can do better than a supercomputer. You and your mind will be needed to help shape the artificial intelligence of the future and to help keep it humane, culturally inclusive and ethical. We are at an incredible moment in history. COVID-19 might have isolated us at home but open and citizen science have created a new scientific democracy where diverse minds anywhere can hop online and work with others in the world to begin to solve the problems of our future. The internet is your magical portal into a people powered global revolution to accelerate scientific discovery where you get to work along science's leaders and help carve paths of understanding through our opening silos of data. 
in this science democracy, we all get to share our experience as we collaborate to make discoveries that could cure diseases, hold back climate change, discover or explore new planets, help turn brain data into understanding mental health, enhance our own mental health while we're doing it, transform online education, and make science that we can all trust and believe in. You are the final piece of the jigsaw in science's new universe. Whether you are an immigrant, undergraduate student, developer writing open software at MIT, or a precocious plumber's daughter on an island in the middle of the Irish Sea. Thank you. <laughs>